Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about this knife right here. It is a stunner of a knife. Just look at it. Absolutely beautiful knife from uh, Cold Steel. This is a Master Tanto. Absolutely beautiful knife. One of my favorite knives from uh, Cold Steel. We're going to be talking about this knife in particular and also we're going to talk a little bit about the history of the tanto and also um this particular knife is in sand my steel and we'll talk a little bit about sand my steel so if you'd like to learn about all that stuff and spend a few minutes looking at this absolutely gorgeous beautiful exquisite knife go ahead and check out the video You got it? Yeah! Oh, I love it. I'm a dinner fly. Okay, mommy. I'm a dinner fly. Okay? Don't fall. Ah, I fall! Mama, I fall, okay? Mom, mom! You can do it. You got it. Okay, welcome back to the Fortified Castle. Hi to all my viewers. Bonjour, privet, guten tag, hola, ciao, and konnichiwa to my foreign viewers. That's very apparent, uh, appropriate because konnichiwa is Japanese. And that's what we're going to be talking about, a Japanese-style knife today. Absolutely beautiful. Before we do that, I want to thank everybody who checked into the live show last night. Really appreciate the support. But if you didn't check into the live show, go ahead and check that video out because it is going to be a day that lives in infamy. If you all have ever seen that Chippendale video that Saturday Night Live did with Chris Foley and Patrick Swayze, yeah, it's along those lines. That wild and crazy guy, Stephen from Patty's Potato Peeler, took his shirt off. And man, that's going to be a YouTube sensation. You got to see that. You don't have to watch the whole video. It's about 5 minutes and 29 seconds into the video. So go ahead and check out the uh, live show and then scroll it to 529, right around 5 minutes, 29 seconds. And you'll see Stephen, Patty Potato Peeler. Peeler, bearing all to a million person audience all around the world and let me tell you something it is awesome what a beefcake all right so let's get started with this stuff right here so this is the cold steel master tanto see it right there master tanto cold steel San Mai steel taiwan uh, I don't have anything against Taiwan. I think they make a fantastic knife. They've made knives for Spyderco from uh, Taiwan. A lot of other companies use them. Um, a lot of companies use them. I'm good to go with Taiwan. Um, so, overall, this knife is 11 and a half inches long with a 6 inch blade. It's 3 16 thick or 0 1 8 pretty thick blade for a little knife um that is 14 and a half centimeters for the blade length overall length of 27.5 centimeters and a blade thickness of 4.5 centimeters blade is made out of sand mine if you look there look real close you can see the difference Different seed in the middle there, the, the sandwiched steel, and that is the nature of San Mai, which we'll talk about in a second. So this is just an awesome little knife. Let's be honest here, this knife is purely a fighting knife for defensive purposes. That's what this knife is designed for. That said. Um, I, uh, I have not taken this, this is kind of a, uh, 
picture knife for me. I put it on a shelf. I love looking at it. But I have taken uh, Cold Steel's uh, recon tano out and used it in the bush. And it split wood fine. I was absolutely stunned to realize, you know, how well the knife performed out there in the bush. This um, is a K-bar. That's kind of the traditional thing you would think about taking into the bush. The utility Bowie type style knife. But, um, yeah, them tano knives you can use in the bush if you so desire. It worked just fine on that recon tanto that I uh, used. And um, let me look at it. Let's just look at this. So you have a, oh, let's get her snapped in. You know what? I'm going to get rid of the eye candy here so we can look at this. All right. So you have a beautiful flap there. And then you have a saber grind down to the edge perfectly formed edge on this knife and a tanto tip we're going to talk about that in just a second you can see the geometry there how it merges with the saber merges with the flat there and it is very thick look how thick that knife is so here's a little four inch uh, hunting knife you can see the difference in the tips right there lot thicker tip on that here's a little bigger one right here with a clip blade again let's get her to snap in Whoop. gotta get them lined up there you go yeah you can see how much thicker that tip is so um great knife for piercing got a collar here which provides a little uh stop Traditionally, uh, Oriental knives didn't have this guard. They were just flat, and they used them just fine. You have Crayx uh, handle here. This kind of a rubbery handle if you've never um, had a cold steel. Very grippy, but not too grippy. So it doesn't grab your hand, but it just your knife feels just great in the hand. And then you have a very strong uh, pommel at the end here to crack nuts. That's what we use them for, right? Okay. So, uh, what is a tanto? Yeah, so in, in um, Japan, there's basically three types of sword size, uh, types. There's a lot of different names for these swords. They're based upon the period in which they were used, but basically three types. And that is the katana, which measures between usually between 24 and 31 inches, although some could be much larger. And you have a, a um, wasashi, which measures between 12 and uh, 24 inches. So it's kind of like a medium sword. And then you have a tanto. And that tanto is from 6 to 12 inches. And that's what this is. So a tanto, we would just consider a knife. But in Japan, they consider a sword. But also a lot of pulled weapons in Japan are considered as swords also, even though they're what we would consider to be a pike. So a tanto is basically a small knife. That's what it means. This is a master tanto. So uh, how does this come into? We always talk about the tanto tip and a very strong tip on the knife. So actually this tip is called a uh, shinoga right here. And it was actually not used very often on knives in Japan. So mainly this tip right here um, was used in long swords. Um, but it was used also in, in um, tantos. And there were about 11 different blade types, bl different blade geometries used in tantos. And the um, shinoga tip was um, just... On one of those and you know we've we've been conditioned to think of um, uh, tanto as a tip where actually it's a knife it's actually a shinoga shinoga is how do you pronounce that all right let's talk about the blade steel on it all right so um, sanmai again is a uh, Japanese term and uh, roughly translated, it means three layers. So 
uh, as I showed you before, you can see in here that middle layer. So you have a middle layer and two outer layers um, that are sandwiched, that sandwich the uh, middle layer. And it makes a um, strong blade. So um, what you do is you take a very hard uh, uh, steel. And in this case, cold steel to use uh, BG10. We'll talk about that in a minute. A very hard steel in the center. And that hard steel is what comes out at the edge. You can see a line here on the grind. See that line right there? Right there. You see it? So that is the um, secondary steels in this exposed in the BG-10, which is the hard steel in this case. I think they just use 420 for the, uh, the softer steels, but I'm not really sure. So <clears throat> what that does is it gives you that hard steel so you have a very hard um, edge, which allows it to uh, be tough, not chip, and... Um, have good retention. The softer steel surround it so that it's it's tougher and will will accept more shock, and and would be perfect in a sword type situation. And um, you know, does that actually work? I I don't know. I think knife experts kind of split on whether that you know actually works. I think uh, tough steel like uh, 3V or L Max, it is is um you know probably better than sanmai but i've never tested them and i've never read that that one outperforms the other either so uh, that's the basic idea of sanmai though and um why they layer it is to have a, a hard uh, inner core and softer metal on the outside to accept shock from strikes or baton and things like that so um, uh, I do know like, uh, Cold Steel puts Sanmai on their Trial Master, which is a, a camp knife and people beat the crap out of that. I never heard where people were bla breaking blades on it. So, um, as far as GD BG-10, that kind of surprised me that they use that as their hard center. But, um, I looked. I looked up some steel comparisons and BG-10 can be brought up to 60 HRC and at 60 HRC it's very hard in fact it lists out of, uh, in between 1 and 10 it lists at 6 for uh, hardness when you go above that um, the only steels above that are the the tough steels you normally associate um, like 428C, uh, 3V, LMAX, those types of steels. So it really, I guess, is a good choice if you're putting the proper heat treatment on it. And um, I think it probably works. I don't know. I've never used this, but uh, I've seen tests on it where people are driving it through car lids and things like that. So... Um, that's pretty much the deal on this cold steel knife. What did I do with the sheath? Let me show you that before we stop. And there we have it, the uh, traditional cold steel sheath, thermoplastic. Um, they're just great. You have a good lockup on here, a solid lockup. You hear that? They have a little thumb print right here to pop it out. Strong lockup uh, with the uh, nylon strap in the back. Of course, as always, you can take take this off, and you can put other attachments on here if you want. You get lanyard uh, or uh, strap attachments to put it on your pack. A uh, lot of variability in these cold steel um, sheaths. I've learned to really come to like them. Um, this knife really. It deserves a better sheath though. Maybe a wooden sheath. I may make one for this knife eventually. I think out of bamboo or something like that. That would be really cool. Anyhow, I hope you found it informative. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as always, you know, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Don't forget to check out that uh, live show. Man, it is hilarious when Steven takes his shirt off. Okay. Thanks again, guys. Have a great week.